In December 2021, Typhoon Odette hit the Philippines. This reef on Negos Island was severely affected. How do the corals look now, eight months later? So these are a number of coral fragments which are still laying around in the sand and they were knocked out by Typhoon Odette. So this is one larger fragment of a Acropora stacon coral and it ended up in the sand about a hundred meters from the extra coral reef and you can see that it has a mixed fate basically. So the question is, how would the corals in such a position survive? And not too bad. So here, uh, there's mostly algae invertebrates, and there is a tiny bit of live coral on the right side of this block. Of course, this is still a habitat for fish and invertebrates. It's quite interesting. So again, you know, this was not placed there by any person. But this is an effect of a typhoon, that this piece of coral is in a location where it really doesn't belong to. And the, yeah, this is a close-up of the living part. You can see that it's uh, light brown, which is caused by the symbiotic algae in the tissue of the corals. And only the tips, well, this piece of coral might still be growing. Uh, the tips are white. And this is a piece of this coral fragment which is overgrown by algae. Now, you know, where there's death, there's life. So there is a ghost goby here which has made this his home. And I can tell you why I believe that it's a his. It's a male goby because the fish is guarding eggs. And this is typically what the males do in gobies. So below the goby, these uh, silvery spots, these are goby eggs. So even though the extra stacon corals are doomed, and I believe the small piece of stacon coral will not survive, it, you know, it's, it's, it's useful for some marine animals. This is the same goby seven months ago, a month after Odette. Now, here are some fish, goldfish foraging in the sand. And the sand ecosystem is a different ecosystem as compared to the coral reef ecosystem. This is not a barren wasteland. This is a functioning, really interesting ecosystem. So the corals were just in the wrong place. What's in the right place is this feather star, this crinoid. And there's a small squat lobster living in it. They couldn't film it for very long, unfortunately. The motherfucker. <laughs> And there are so many other interesting animals in the sense. And right next to the squat lobster of the queen, it was this juvenile crocodile fish. And if you look closely, it seems to be feeding on an even smaller fish. So that fish is tiny. If you look at the sand grains in, in relation to the body of the fish, and it's chewing on another fish there's still the caudal fin sticking out of the mouth and it seems to be having a hard time getting that whole prey fish into its mouth amazing stuff this is one of these pieces of natural history which i only saw after i looked at the video i did not uh, realize that in person now also in the sand habitat there are a lot of snake eels. The snake eel is actually rather large fish, but only the head sticks out. They have to engage in this odd chewing movement. It's not a chewing movement, it's a, a ventilation movement to be able to get uh, oxygen-rich water on their gills. And they hide in the sand like this. They're rather well camouflaged, really, so that they can prey on small fishes which swim by. So, quite a fascinating group of animals and you know, very bizarre looks. You know, these, these different uh, colors on the head of this fish essentially mimicking 
a piece of rock overgrown by algae to make it particularly hard for the unsuspecting prey fish to detect these. And they are stationary most of their life. It saves a lot of energy. This is a different species of snake eel. Again, you see that ventilation movement and the fish is mostly covered by sand. Really only looking out are the eyes to detect the prey which might swim by and the mouth of that fish to grab a careless small fish. Now these are very specific animals for the sand ecosystems. You will not find them in coral reefs. So we can clearly see here there is a specialist fauna in the sand and there is no lack of corals because this is a depauperate ecosystem this is just something different and the corals kicked there by typhoon or dead will not do too well on the long run and also creating an artificial reef uh, by well-meaning scuba divers in this kind of ecosystem is not something that makes sense this is still the eye of the snake eel here it's looking for prey this eye might be the last thing which some small fish which swims by their seeds so you know the diving in the sandy areas is often called muck diving really fascinating to look for small stuff there Another species which we see in the sand, which is really specialized for living and hunting there, are these blue-spotted stingrays. They're not aggressive, but they can hurt you with the barb on their tail. If you're not careful, if you step on them in the shallows, or if you, you know, stupidly try to grab them. and they are actually very good at hiding from one moment to the next. So I slowed the video down here so that you can see better what's happening. And they can very quickly disappear and you won't even realize that there's a fish in the sand right below you. So camouflage is really one of the main survival strategies in the sand. Fascinating, no more ray here. And I hope you have ex enjoyed this excursion into the sand ecosystem. Finally, I want to show you a plug which is now underwater near the dive site car wreck, which is dedicated to the memory of my friend Simon, who passed away this year, way too young. So Simon always really enjoyed diving this site and I think this is a great way to remember this, this cheerful and funny guy. See you next week.